Point number 18. So what else? In John chapter 1 verse 26, this is what John the Baptist said. The next day, John saw Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Why couldn't he say God? Behold, there's God the Savior. God the Lamb the Savior. Christians might say, yeah, well, Jesus is Lamb the God. Why didn't John just say God the Lamb the Savior? Why just the Lamb of God? In the same chapter, John chapter 1 verse 34, And I saw and I bear record that this is the Son of God, not the divine Son of God. John, cha John chapter 4 verses 13 to 19. Before I make this point, let me make it explicitly clear. The Gospel of John, the most Christological Gospel according to some, there is not one person in this Gospel during the lifetime of Jesus who believes he's God. Not one. He's going to bring up Thomas, but we're going to see what his own Trinitarian scholars have to say about Thomas. Not one person in the Gospel of John ever goes to Jesus and says, you are God. Why should they say that he is God? Again, arguing from silence, but that's okay. We acknowledge that this is all Muslims have to work with. And I will illustrate how futile, again, Sami's argument is. To object that people don't testify that this is God means that they should have done so. And that Yeshua didn't say that he is God means that he should have done so. If that's the argument you raise, okay? But since no one did this, this means that Yeshua wasn't God. Now let's apply this nonsensical logic to the Quran. Only this time it holds weight. Uh, the God of the Bible uses his name more than 6,000 times. He always testifies by his personal name, Yahweh. Yet Allah has all these names for himself in the Quran. 99 of them. But which one so happens to be? Totally absent in that lineup. Exactly. The personal name, Yahweh. The name by which Yahweh wants to be called forever. Yet Allah shows no affiliation whatsoever with that name at all. This means, by Sami's own standard, that Allah is not Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. But then again, we already knew that, didn't we? Point number 19. But now another point. Jesus himself has a God. How many? Five seconds? Okay, I have so much info, but either way, Jesus has a God. And that was my last point anyway. Thank you. I have seen Sammy raise this argument in the past as well, and he always refers to Hebrews 1 verse 9. And Sammy refers to that verse as if he doesn't even know that Hebrews 1 verse 9 is a direct quote from the Tanakh and says the following. Which means, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of equity is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Give this text to any Hebrew-speaking person that is not familiar with the text, so that he will not be theologically biased, and see how he translates and understands the text. Here, the psalmist, on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says that the subject, who is God, is anointed by his God. I don't see how Sammy's point does any damage to anything the Bible testifies to. Yes, not only according to Hebrews does God have a God, but according to the Psalms, God has a God as well. And ironically, Allah claimed to have given David the Psalms. <laughs> Again, it's laughable. Point number 20. And then, would Amir Rasul say these things? Would the Almighty God come out of a vagina and a womb of a lady? Would the Almighty God get hungry and cry? Would the Almighty God have His foreskin circumcised in eight days? You want to play, the, would this say that or would that say that? We don't want to go there. You say the Almighty God. Would an uh, Almighty God do that? You say yes, so I'll say yeah, Mir Rasul can do that. Why not?
If Almighty God can come out of a lady, anything's possible. Amir Rasul will say that. What's the problem with that? This is just an argument to appeal to emotions. Would the Almighty God do this and that? God can do whatever He wants. That's a non-argument. Are you, as a Muslim, saying that God could not become incarnate? Based on what? That's an act of God and it's His prerogative. If you have a hard time believing it, then that's your problem. Sami claims that since we claim that God came through Miriam, then they can claim that a prophet can say things only due to God. But this doesn't follow at all. Now I have to warn you because I have to get graphic to drill this point home. God can do whatever he wants. Who will be able to stop him when he has decreed something? But a prophet has someone to answer to. So a prophet can't say things that he is not commanded to say. That's a no-no. As per Deuteronomy 18 verse 20. Sammy has often brought the God coming out of a vagina argument a number of times to shock his listeners. Sammy has a problem with that. But Sammy apparently has no problem with a 53-year-old spiritually unstable demon-possessed pedophile sucking on the lips of a man and touching a 9-year-old vagina. And if you as a Muslim are offended about what I just said, then that's good because that's exactly who you put your trust in and have labeled the greatest example of human conduct ever. Just close your eyes and think about a 9-year-old little girl lying in bed with a 53-year-old man, both naked, being ravished by him. And I urge you to think about what I just said. I didn't invent this. These are in your own sources. This is what you Muslims apparently have no quarrel with. The irony is when Catholic priests who go against the command of God are caught touching little children, Muslims will go on a rant and condemn it in every way yet when it comes to their prophet doing the same thing they try to excuse his every repulsive act and refuse to condemn him as they do with the priests so why aren't Muslims consistent in their standards this is the Muslim hypocrisy and this hypocrisy will be blatantly clear when I tackle his pretension that Islam is a religion of peace in his debate with David Wood somewhere in the near future if you think you have the right to be angry or upset or offended when we declare that God chose to come to us through natural birth yet you think that we have to be perfectly okay with the fact that you declare a man that took advantage of a little girl as the best example of human conduct ever you have another thing coming God's hand was not in this no matter how many wet dreams that man claimed to have had about this girl being delivered to him by an angel which we also find in your sources